In SmartWord, there are three main use cases. You can create templates in SmartWord and you can use it for authoring of requirements and save these, those as work items in TFS. You can run reports in Word and you can use for collaboration and get feedback from users. Let's begin by connecting to a team project. This is a CMMI project template that, that I'm going to connect to. These are the work items in that process template. Now you could have selected a Scrum project or Agile project or even a customized process template. All the work items would show up here with their properties right underneath that. In creating the template, there are two ways. We can use the site panel, the smart panel, or we can use the wizard. We're going to start by using the site panel. I'm going to create a form. This is one of the styles that is supported. And in here, I will also add priority. I'm simply going to double click there. I'm going to bring in a requirement as a form. And I'm going to bring in issues in a table format. I'm going to reduce the spacing in the Word document. So there's no spacing there. And I'll do the same with these. It's important that uh, the headings use bulleted heading style. So I'm not going to change the style of the headings, just the content therein. I'm going to then identify this as a sub element, which simply means that it's, a, it's going to become a child when I author in this view. And I'm going to do that same there. Once I've de defined my my document uh, template, I'm going to click on auto create smart part. And smart board is going to go through and, uh, and remember each of the sections in the document. Now what that means is when it remembers the section means simply that you'll have this button enabled where you can insert a feature. And for the feature, you can then insert multiple requirements and it's an issues against the feature as well. Now, once you define a template, uh, now this time I've saved this, this as a DOCX file, but I could have saved it as a DOTX, a word template file, and shared it with other people so that they can use it as a, as a starting point. So let's now use this template for authoring. I'm going to go to my feature and say user management. In the description field, I'll add some description here. Perhaps insert a, a picture. Like so. Just resize this to be a bit smaller. And then I'm going to assign um, an iteration path here. Perhaps assign a priority there. Now all of these drop-down values are actually coming directly from TFS. So any of the properties you use, that's where the values are coming. And if when you use the state value, the state value is also coming from TFS and the workflow rules are actually being honored directly in Word. So let's go ahead and define a requirement. So I'll do system shall allow user to register. You can provide a description there. And in the description, you can even add tables. You can add a table to the description and populate it as you please. And then I'm going to find some issues. Uh, 
I'm gonna add a second feature. Perhaps uh, another requirement can be defined. And if you wanted to add another requirement for that, then you can do insert smart part requirement. And then this is one more requirement. Once you've authored in Word, you can simply click on publish and it will publish to TFS. All of these work items and the relationship between them will be published to TFS. So let's take a look at uh, these work items in Visual Studio. So that's my user management work item with the image in it. This is the table in there. And you can see the entire hierarchy has come through. Now in the event that you actually make updates here, I can, you can see I didn't spell this right. I'll update that. I'll also go in, create an update here, and I'll save it. In Word, you simply have to hit refresh again, and it will go and get the updates from TFS. So you will see that the description update has been acquired and so has the, the work item title. The ID is there. Okay. So in this manner, your Word document never gets outdated or stale. So once you create the template, the first use case is that the ability to create and author work items directly in Word along with their traceability. The other use case you have here is the ability to generate reports. So I'll delete this. And when you want to generate a report, there are two different ways. One is you can run a query. So I'll do all work items query, since I don't have many work items in this project as yet. It will run the, the query and bring in the data into Word based on the template that we had defined. So it's gonna use the same template sections and show the same fields as we had defined earlier. That's one way of doing it. Now, once you've brought the data in here, you can still uh, update the information. You can update any work item directly in Word and you can hit publish. And this will publish the information to TFS. You will note that, you should note that the only thing that we update in TFS are fields that are actually updated. So anything that's not updated does not get pushed to TFS. So only the dirty fields, i.e. those that have changed, get published to TFS. The second way of bringing work items into Word is by doing a get work item. When you do a get work item, you can either search by ID or text, uh, or you can run a query and then select a given work item. If I select a given work item, I can leave the flat list here, for example, and I can click on OK, and it will get that one work item. That's just the work item that I selected is now in this document. Alternatively, I could select the work item and choose to bring in a tree of work items or direct links. Tree of work items will bring the entire hierarchy of parent-child relationship into the Word document for this work item, i.e. it'll bring all of these. Or alternatively, uh, you can do direct links, which is a single hop, get work item query. So it, in this case, it got the feature and the related work items into the document. Now, when you do a get work item, it typically appends the get work item um, information at the end of the document. Now, what you can do, however, is that say you have some info here, 
and more info here. These are static text. But if I go now and say, I want to get this work item as a flat list, I can say, bring in the work item directly at, the, um, at this position. So I can go ahead and do that. And so what it does is actually gets it before this other static text that I had um, in, the, in the document. So if you do want to bring it in a certain place, you can do that. Now let's, uh, let me just go get uh, a tree of work items again for that work item, for this feature work item and uh, show you a couple of things about collaboration. So one of the things you can now do is that you can have, um, you can generate a document or create a smart document and send it to others for review. Now, if, if they turn on track changes, now they can make changes directly in the in the document. So let me just turn on all markups. So you can see the, 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 the changes that I'm doing. More info. I can go ahead and uh, change my iteration path, perhaps change my priority, and so on. Okay. So when people make changes to the document, uh, they may not have smart word, but they'll still see uh, these these properties. Um, once you get it back, you can then accept or reject the various changes, or you can accept them all, and you stop track changes, and then from Smart Word, you can then publish it. So this will publish the document back to TFS. Again, just the changes are published to TFS. And what, what, what that really means is you don't have to double key in, the data into uh, Word and TFS. You just make the updates in Word and push it to TFS. So double data entry is, is saved. One other approach of uh, providing feedback is where you can click on the feedback panel. The the feedback button opens up the feedback panel. So in here you will see since my focus is on this feature work item number two, work item number two, which is also shown at the top here, I can now go ahead and say, I love smart word for TFS. I can give it five stars and submit my feedback. So feedback has been added. I can then go ahead and uh, to my next work item and provide uh, some feedback. Integration with Active Directory is a must. Please add this to the requirements. Give it a stars, submit my feedback. Now you will see that when I'm not selecting any work item, i.e. I'm outside of every work item, you'll see a summary that I have two feedback, one excellent feedback, one very good feedback. Here's my feedbacks. I can click on the ID. This, this will open up the feedback response work item. Now this feedback response work item is now available from TFS Web Access and through all the other TFS tools. And this feedback response work item says that I love smart work for TFS. This is the feedback I had given. It's linked to the work item that is on which I provided the feedback. I can now assign the feedback to one of my team members who can then um, look into it and be notified that they have been assigned a feedback. You can also uh, close the feedback when you're done with it. The idea being now you have a more managed process of working with feedbacks. So that's the second way of doing feedback management. Finally, the you can click on um, you can click on uh, show all work items button, 
And what this does is actually shows you for the selected work item, all other work items that, 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 that are linked to it. You can also go and create um, a new work items that are linked to this feature. Uh, do something awesome. You can select the area path if you've defined one um, and flesh out your tasks here. So although the task is actually not in, uh, this task is not in, um, is not in the document, you can still create linked uh, task and, and view what's linked to it and, and anytime double click on it and get to the details therein. So that's, uh, that's fundamentally um, a smart word. Um, the, the one other thing I'll mention here is that you can always disconnect from a given project and connect to another project of the same process template type. So if you have a CMMI project, you have authored some stuff, you bring it into Word, you disconnect it, you connect to another project and you publish it. And this allows you to reuse information across multiple projects. You also have the ability to work with Smart Word on Visual Studio Online, as well as uh, TFS on-prem. It requires TFS uh, 2010 and above. And uh, from a Word perspective, we support 2007 Word, uh, Update 3 and above. So 2010 and 2013 as well. For details, uh, on how to use it uh, in terms of a step-by-step -step guide, please visit uh, our website for uh, get started uh, section and that has step-by-step -step guides and, and de de detailed videos as well and hope to see you soon. Thank you.